I'm Jessica, also known as Daydreamer, and if you're completely new here, I'm that one girl that makes Scott 7 Things You Didn't Notice videos. I am so excited because I've been meaning to make this video for literally years now, and I do have a general how I edit video up on my blog channel, so shameless plug, but I just finished my two years at a community college and I'm going to be transferring to UCLA, so I've been vlogging that whole experience, so if you're interested, please go support me there. I have a how I edit video up already there, and it's more of a general video. I definitely explain more about programs and my inspirations and stuff like that and general tips for beginners more in that video compared to this video so I just want to put that out there that this video is going to be pretty specific to TYDNs or things you didn't notice videos. Also thank you so so much for like almost 7 million views on my TYDN for GOT7's Just Right real GOT7 version because that's actually like insane. I I honestly don't know how that video is still getting so many views, so thank you. In this video, I'm going to be covering, obviously, how I edit my TYDNs, but I'm also going to be reiterating some more important information that I talked about in my general how I edit video, so important things like programs, and I'm also going to be talking about copyright, then I'm going to get into my workflow. First off, programs. Like I said, I explained more about this in my other video, but to briefly recap the important thing, I use Adobe Premiere Pro to edit TYDNs, but I also use Adobe After Effects to edit things in general. And I always get questions about what program I use to edit, but the thing is, the program that you use does not matter as much as you probably think it does. The reason for that is because if you're a beginner editor, then you won't really know how to use the complex things that more complicated programs like After Effects has to offer anyway and so it's just easier to use programs that are more convenient for you because TYDNs honestly are not difficult to edit it's just adding text keyframing text and zooming in and out of things it's very very simple and I'm sure you can use programs like iMovie and Windows Movie Maker to make that type of stuff I wanted to provide a quick example of what I meant so After Effects is a much more complex program than Premiere aka you can do much more on it and you have a lot of freedom and so people see it as the in quotation marks <laughs> better program but the program does give you more freedom but it's not the better one to edit TYDN just to show you guys how complicated it is to do it on After Effects when you cut clips they step up like this and when you add titles you have to copy it and paste them every single time like this. So when you're done editing, it's just a huge like hundreds and hundreds of layers versus in Premiere where it's very clean and the text, you don't have to duplicate it. You just go like that and then it's fine. So I hope that's a little bit more clear. I also got questions about phone app recommendations for editing. I don't have any because I don't edit on my phone. I used iMovie a few times, but not to edit like the stuff I upload on my channel more just things that i needed to just have a video of on my camera roll if that makes any sense so if you know any phone editing programs that are good feel free to leave them in the comments because i'm also interested and i'm sure it would be helpful to others as well so with that being said obviously i edit on my pc adobe premiere and after effects are pretty expensive but there are honestly ways to get that for free on the internet but i'm not encouraging that because it's very likely that you're going to get a virus if you haven't done it before, you don't have someone that has had experience in it to help you out. So be careful. I don't want you to break your whole computer just because you were trying to download an editing software. Okay. Copyright. I think a lot of you believe that my videos are monetized, but actually a lot of them are not. And the reason for that is because my videos have got seven music in it and I can't really go around that. What I personally do, I've never said this in a video, but I've answered a lot of questions about it. Once I upload a video, there's usually a copyright claim, meaning that the video is still viewable in all countries usually, but I cannot make money off of it. So I usually dispute that claim for very Use. I forgot exactly what fair use says, but I'll include it here. My videos fall into the commentary section because that's basically what a TYDN is. I'm just reacting to the video, but in editing form. And after 30 days, if there's no response to your claim, aka meaning if JYP doesn't see that you disputed the claim, then after those 30 days, you can start making money off of that video. But for those first 30 days, you don't receive any of the revenue. Occasionally, my dispute will get denied. 
which I don't know why, but it gets denied sometimes, so it's not ever guaranteed that a video is going to be monetized. I don't know how it works for other companies, but I know that's how it works for JYP. So I normally don't ever speed up or slow down a video unless the video cannot be viewable. So for example, the TYDN I made for the GOT 7's Mr. Chu cover, that one was hard for me to upload because I couldn't make it viewable unless I changed the video completely so that YouTube would not be able to recognize the video so I have to speed up that video but I normally don't do that but that's a way to get around copyright I don't like to do that because I feel like it takes away from the quality of the video so I'm going to go into my workflow now and like I said I'm not going to be giving tips in this video if you're interested in that make sure you go watch the how I edit video on my vlog channel so before we jump into the program the first thing I do is obviously watch the video except when I do this I try to envision the video as something that's already edited so I try to imagine it in my head as a finished product. Usually what I do is I watch the video just for like enjoyment reasons and then I actually try to think about how it would look as a finished TYDN in my head. I feel like a lot of you think that I watch the video like millions of times so that I can spot these tiny things but I actually don't do that. I normally watch it once then I watch it again to see if it's editable as a TYDN and then I go straight to editing. I'm going to explain how I spot the small things once I get into the program. So yeah, that's my first step. I think I used to watch a video lots and lots of times, but I realized that that's pretty unnecessary and it's a waste of time. I mean, unless like you just want to watch it for fun, which I do, but like for editing reasons, you don't have to waste your time doing that. I'm going to hop into Premiere Pro now and show you exactly what I do. There's usually two ways that I go about editing a TYDN. First of all, I'm editing the Just Right Real Got 7 dance practice. So like I said, when I edit these videos, I haven't watched it a million times. The first way to do it is to make all the cuts in the whole video first. So I'm not sure how to explain this, but this is what I normally do. What I did there was I was making mental notes in my head of who was doing what and what potential comments I could add there. So I split it up into one, two, three, four sections just in this little introduction. So I do it in chunks. In this section, I cut this because Jackson was like being Jackson. In this section, Young Jay was talking. In this section, Bam Bam was talking. And then there was Mark. So these are all four different comments that I would make. And usually I rewatch the same chunk over and over again to make sure I don't miss anything. And one other thing I do is read the comments of the original dance practice video because it lets me know what people find funny because the top comment will usually be something funny with a timestamp. So it's useful. And I make sure to include all of those. Also, they spelled got seven wrong. Another thing I did was I tried to cut to the beat. So for example, I'm going to scale these videos up and down so you guys can tell when the cuts are and you'll see that I cut to the music. So it's not perfect and this is when I would normally go in and fix that. Even though cutting to the music isn't really important to this type of video, it does add a little bit of satisfaction and it's more of a subconscious thing when people are watching the video. It just seems a little bit more satisfying. So I would do this for the entire video. This is a way I started editing TYDNs in more recent years. I didn't do it like this before, but this way is definitely faster. The only downside with this method is that I forget what I was going to say in my head because I like make mental notes of what I'm going to say and then I forget because I already cut the entire video and have to go back to the beginning. Sometimes I do it in larger chunks so verse one, chorus, verse two, bridge, last chorus but honestly usually I do end up cutting the whole video before doing that. Usually after I have the whole video cut I go back in to do another round of going through the whole video except zooming in, zooming out, slowing things down, and speeding things up. Usually altering the speed of the clip depends on how long the sentence I'm saying is. I do know that my titles are a bit fast but that's just because I read really fast and I don't want the video to be extremely long because you can always pause at a certain time but you can't speed things up without skipping some stuff so I try to keep it relatively fast. I'm going to show how I do that now. Today I already have the whole video cut and I'm going to start back at the introduction and start altering each clip to make it look more funny I guess. Okay, so here I'm trying to focus on Jackson, so I'm going to scale this 
and I'm going to keyframe. I'm not going to explain how to keyframe, but it's basically moving a clip from one position to another position. There's a lot of tutorials about this online, so feel free to look those up, but it's very easy once you get the hang of it. So I'm gonna keyframe these. And the keyframes are up here. I don't like how the clip sort of moves until here and then stops, so I'm gonna delete this keyframe and then what should I do? Yeah, that's a lot cleaner. Okay, now I'm gonna focus in on Youngjae. Also, I haven't watched my actual edit of this video in a while, so I'm basically going into this blind. <laughs> Also, another thing I do is if there's text like here, I try to cut it out completely if possible because I feel like it looks ugly if it's just like half of it showing. So it's like that. So now we have... Oh god, I hope I don't get copyrighted for this. <laughs> so now that I have all of this, I'm going to start adding title. Just for the sake of this demo, I'm just gonna write whatever. So for the fonts I use, I use this font looks like giraffe and I usually do that in all caps and I also make the text a little bit wider. To be honest, I don't remember how to stretch the font. I normally use the 2016 version but I wanted to use 2019 because that's probably what most people are using nowadays but I would normally stretch this font but since I can't do that I'm gonna space it out. The thing about this font though is that the spaces are usually too large. You can't really tell because there's only two words here but I normally go in with every space and I make it a little bit smaller. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it as is for the demo. I'm gonna keyframe this. I try to keep it at the same level, so I usually hold shift to make sure that it doesn't move from that axis. And I usually try to center it with the member. It's not extremely smooth, but we're gonna move on. I'm not gonna do bam bam because this is taking a while, but now it looks like this. That's not very smooth, the text, but you get the idea. So to recap this first way that I edit to the end, I cut the whole video first, I go back in and I zoom in, speed up, do whatever for each clip if it needs it, and then I go back and I add titles for every one of those clips. The second way I do this is I do it one by one. I usually cut a clip, then I zoom in, do whatever I need to it, then add the title, and then I move on. Doing that also helps me see things that I normally actually wouldn't have noticed. To spot the small things, I usually... It's hard to explain, but this is what I do, so I'm gonna mute this. So we have this little section. Obviously, Jackson is center here, so that's who we notice, especially because he's being a little weird. I have it only cut down to this section, but it really depends on how long I want the clip to be. Let's watch this clip. Okay, so here obviously we notice Jackson, but going through this slowly, we see Yugyeom, uh really exaggerating his neck there. And there's Young Jay smiling, and Jaebom just. I would let this section play because of Jackson and probably do something that focuses in on him. And then Yugyeom does the neck thing here, so I'm gonna cut this. And then there's JB, so those are the things I want to exaggerate. So now I'm going to copy and paste this clip. This one I want it to focus on Yugyeom. I'm just gonna do this really roughly, by the way. So now we have this. Another thing I also do is if I want to duplicate a clip like I just did now, I make sure that the ends of the duplicate clip matches up with the next part of the video. Okay, so this is what it looks like right now. What I don't want it to look like is this. So it's a little bit choppy and I try to do small things like that to keep it clean and try to keep the quality of the video up. So I just go back and do that over and over again and I try to make sure that I'm not just mentioning like the funny silly things that they're doing but also when they look nice like freaking Jin Young and Bam Bam here like I would also probably zoom in on that and then there's a mark. See like there's a lot of small things if you just skim the video like this in editing you're gonna notice a lot of things especially if you're watching the same section over and over again. So I haven't watched this video 
video in forever, but I did notice quite some things, so. This is my file for my things you didn't notice for the Not By The Moon Dance Practice Part Switch version. I don't have the file installed right now, but just so you guys can sort of see how a finished product looks, this is the file. So there's the main clips and the ones that have these little squares with effects in them are the ones that I zoomed in or slowed down, and all the pink ones are the text. Another thing I usually do for the introduction, I try to put TYDN Daydreamer and I try to match up the fonts as closely as possible. So for example here for the Not By The Moon part switch version, this section was the original one and then I just threw in TYDN and Daydreamer there and I tried to just match the font. I try to do things like that too just to once again up the quality a little bit. So yeah, that's my workflow and I hope it was helpful. Yay, we're back. Okay, um, <laughs> thank you for watching all the way through. I really, really appreciate it. Please go check out my vlog channel. I've been keeping it pretty low key unless you follow me on social media, but yeah, I, I really am enjoying the content I'm editing there. So it would mean so, so much to me. And also, um, if you want more tips on editing, please go check out my How I Edit video on my vlog channel. I'm talking about it so much, but like in that video, I also explain tips for how I edit my more complex edits like my best of k-pop video and my fmvs thank you again for watching this video i hope you all are doing well i know times are pretty difficult right now but we got this i hope you have a wonderful rest of the day i'll see you in the next video bye bye <laughs>